Hello everyone and welcome back to Spirituality with Gabriella. Today's video is about twin flames and I will be sharing a little bit about my personal experience with my twin flame. So just to give you a little bit of context, my twin flame and I were in a period of separation for about two years. We are now officially together and Spirit has been asking me to share about my journey but also about twin flames in particular and so I am just following Spirit's guidance. So so let's get started. The first thing to know about twin flames is that the twin flame journey is probably one of the hardest, most heart-wrenching journeys that you will ever go on. It is funny to me that there are people who are trying to manifest their twin flame or are trying to find their twin flame very honestly, and I'm just speaking this from the truth of my experience and the others that I know who have been through this. This is not an easy journey by any means, and it is not really something that you should try and seek out if it wasn't delivered to you by spirit. And the reason for that is that it is truly one of the most intensive healing journeys that you will ever undergo in your life. Many people say that if you have a twin flame, which by the way is exceptionally rare, it is exceptionally, exceptionally, exceptionally rare, then this could be your last lifetime on earth. And Part of that is because it takes so much spiritual knowledge and tools and insights and the willingness to go to some really dark, hard places in order to heal the dynamic between you and your twin flame. So for some context, twin flames are known to be the same soul that was split at conception. So before they came to earth, the soul was split. And just a couple things to know is that this can create this energy of feeling like you're always a little bit incomplete. And I hate to use it that way because I myself feel like I am completely independent. I am a strong person. I've always been that way. But truly, I did always feel like something was missing a little bit. And I had no idea that it was because I was not yet united with my twin flame. So when you meet your twin flame, usually you will have a very intense activation. Either you'll feel so exhilarated that you feel like this is your person and everything is going to be perfect and dreamy, which is what happened to me. Or or you might even feel a wave of shock or fear. I know people who, when they first met their twin flame, their body physically jolted and they had to put their hands up to try and block the amount of energy that they came into contact with. And that is truly because your souls were separate from birth. And so even if an intuitive part of you felt like something was missing, the energies of the two of you being together can be very, very intense. And for me, that manifested in a more joyful way where I thought, oh my God, gosh, this is my person. It's going to be easy breezy. I was telling everyone that I had met my twin flame, or I was just saying, I didn't even know it was my twin flame. I was just telling people, you know, I've met my person. I'm so happy, blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't until later when my twin flame ended up going away and I had to do all of this intense healing that I realized what I was dealing with. So twin flames will always trigger very deep healing within you. Because of that, it is common to have these periods of separation where you are not physically together, you're not physically seeing each other. And that is extraordinarily painful, partly because not only do you love this person, but it truly does feel like they are a part of your soul. It is like no other connection that you will ever have in your lifetime. And some people have asked me, well, what is the difference between soulmates and twin flames? In my opinion, a soulmate is somebody who you have a beautiful relationship with. I don't think that there's as much heaviness or karma, so to speak, in that relationship. I think that with a twin flame, you will have this deep sense of peace, but at the same time, it's very strange because you also feel like, oh my gosh, this person is really triggering me or they're really activating something within me that needs to be healed. And so it's a very strange relationship because it's not one thing or the other. It is honestly everything. And a soulmate is a very beautiful relationship. These people are amazing life partners. They're amazing wives, husbands, things like that. But there's not so much heavy darkness to heal. So with a twin flame, there is honestly a lot of darkness because not only only has your soul been in the same lifetime as them across many, many, many eons and many lifetimes, but you come together in order to heal the deep parts of you. Now, what is the difference between twin flame and a karmic partner? The twin flame will always have this underlying current of unconditional love. So again, 
you meet them and you feel that love emanating from them. It's more of an energetic thing than it is something that you say in words, to be honest. But with karmic partners, there's not that unconditional love. You do feel this sense of darkness and heaviness that needs to be healed, but it's not for any benefit. It is really honestly just to come in and clean out the karma that your soul has amassed across lifetimes. So twin flame, you sense the unconditional love. Karmic partners, there's a lot of masquerading there. There is not true unconditional love. So with twin flames, the most important thing is that you find personal sovereignty. That is why twin flames are brought into one another's life. First of all, you will not unite until you are who you're meant to be internally and externally. I can tell you from personal experience, when I first met my twin flame, I was still working a corporate job where my soul literally felt like it was being dampened and hollow. And I had to go through this immense personal journey and transformation where I left my job. I did a lot of inner child work. I did a lot of healing. I did my Reiki. I started working as a Reiki practitioner. I started giving readings and now I do this full time. And that is just an external mirror of who I had always been internally. And then on my twin flames end, he actually was working a job, but he wasn't making the money or he didn't have the responsibility that he actually really deserved. And now he does have both of those things. And so we truly didn't come back into union with one another until we both went through our own internal healing and transformation. And during that time, you're naturally asking a lot of questions about yourself. You are naturally trying to understand what is my identity and where do I show up in the world? And so that's why you do meet the twin flame usually before that entire transformation process is healed and part of them coming into into your life is the trigger to ask yourself those questions. So I can tell you from personal experience, I had a very difficult journey after meeting my twin flame. I had to do a lot of healing around my relationship with just members of my family. I had to do a lot of healing around my relationship with what it means to be successful in the world. And honestly, it was all really hard. It, I had a terrible year. I had a, a year that was just full of density. It took me down energetically. It took me down personally. It really challenged my self-confidence and my self-esteem. But on the other side of it, I look back and I'll probably get emotional. I am truly so grateful to my former self because I was so brave. I literally was looking at all of these pieces of me that some were things that needed to come out and needed to be seen. And I was just so afraid of showing them, but I forced myself. I made myself show myself to my community online. I really just went there. And then at the same time, there are pieces of me that were really dark and I did not want to go there, honestly. It was really, really scary for me, but I did it. And I look back and I just think, like, wow, former Gabriella was so brave and she was so courageous because truly everything that I did has created the life that I have now. And I have this beautiful community. I get to do work that I find genuinely fun. And I have my twin flame in my life. And our relationship is so loving and so healed and literally brings me joy every single day. But I know that I would not have been able to get to this place if I did not do that really deep, intense work. And so if you feel that you are on a twin flame journey, Journey, my biggest piece of advice is learn about the twin flame journey, but also seek out support because a lot of people do not understand what is at stake here. And a lot of people do not understand this type of relationship. It is an extremely different relationship than any relationship than most people will ever go through. And so of course, in the early days when I was telling my friends that I have met someone that I was in love with and that he had gone away and that he was being really avoidant, of course they told me, well, don't pursue it. Of course, they were trying to protect me. And I completely understand why they told me that. But at the same time, I just had this inner deep knowing that me running away and letting it go was not what I was meant to do. It was something that my intuition told me and I truly just told myself, I, I just can't do that. I remember vividly, I was on this seven hour car drive from Sedona back to San Diego and I thought the entire time, all seven hours about what to do with my situation with my twin flame. And regardless of how 
much I thought about letting him go, I just honestly couldn't bring myself to do it. I couldn't. I just so deeply loved him in this way that I have never loved anyone that I just knew I couldn't let it go. And I remember telling Spirit, okay, Spirit, if we are not meant to be in each other's lives and if I'm just meant to let this go, then, you know, I'm gonna call an ultimatum here. And the ultimatum is that I need to see him this week. And it had been months, by the way. So I need to see him this week or else I'm just gonna let this go. And at that exact second that I told Spirit that, he texted me and he actually arranged to meet up with me that Thursday. So little things like that kept me knowing that I was on a journey and that I had to heal something. And truly I have healed some of the darkest, most intense, most excruciating past lives than I have ever seen and that I have ever known. And I still get emotional talking about it. I still feel really vulnerable talking about it because it was just the most intense healing ever. But on the other side of all of that healing is wow, so much more empowerment. I look back to who I was and I cannot even fathom that I used to care if someone didn't text me back, like a guy. I used to care about that stuff and I had to heal all of that. I had to heal my anxious attachment. I had to heal all fears of love. I had to allow myself to be loved and to receive love. And truly it was like every single tiny part of me had to be healed. And now, I honestly have this beautiful relationship with myself and that is what I got out of the journey. It is always about yourself. It is not even so much about the other person, which is as ironic as it sounds, but truly now that I have my twin flame in my life and he's part of my life and I see him all the time, it's like any other relationship, but it has this very extreme unconditional love. And I can still feel him, whether he is with me or physically somewhere else. He can be in a different state, different country. I can feel his presence as if he's in the same room as me. And that is what my energy was attuning to over time. And he has shared with me that he actually has the same exact experience where first of all, he does deeply miss my presence when I'm away, but he can actually feel me. He can hear my voice. He can see my eyes and my smile in his mind's eye. And so that is the beauty of really going through this journey and being with this person. You develop this most intense telepathic communication there is. And I still get signs from him and his higher self every single day. And that is so beautiful. But also I just love myself. I love my life. I have unconditional love and I truly know what unconditional love feels feels like. And that is the most immense love of all. So that is what the twin flame journey is here to teach us. If we're able to heal the darkness and the pain and all of the karma and still love the other person and still love yourself, that is honestly one of the biggest accomplishments ever. And I say this and it might sound like a joke, but what I have achieved in my twin flame journey, now being with my twin flame and seeing how healthy our relationship is, is probably the biggest accomplishment of my life. I swear to God. <laughs> It is more important to me than having a business. It's more important to me than any of the awards that I ever got. It's more important than graduating from grad school or getting recognized for the master's degree research I did. I don't even care about that stuff because it's all just external and superficial. This healing that I had to go through was so deeply internal and has now manifested in the external. And that is what makes it so special to me. And that is why I'm so proud of myself and why I can so deeply love my former self and also my current self because I know that I walk through the fire and I know that when clients come to me now and they tell me that they're going through pain, trust me, I have been there. I have been through some of the most intense pain there ever was and if I can do it, you can do it too. So this is not me advising you to do anything in particular. I always believe you have to do what resonates with you. This is just me sharing a little bit about my story and my understanding of Twin Flames and I hope that it helped you. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it if you feel so inclined. I love all of you and I will see you all very soon. Bye.